How do you turn your dreams into a reality? How do you get the house that you want, the car that you want, the dream job, the dream business? How do you make sure that this year you never ever worry about money ever again in spite of the pandemic? According to the Bible. Yes, according to the Bible. So we're going to discover how King Solomon, the wisest and richest king who ever lived, talks about how you can turn your dreams into reality in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad happening three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping now. I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches. Now I'm making seven figures like what's cracking everybody? Money smart guy Matt Sapala, and welcome to another episode of currently right now the title of these Sunday night biblical breakdowns. It's called the Biblical Baller Breakdown. But again, I want to remind you, we are in a contest of these Sunday episodes of how do we name these series? How do we name the series? We want to help you with a contribution if you help us come up with the name of the Sunday Biblical Bible Studies. Again, to remind you all, once we cross 75,000 subs and we come up with a name for the Sunday Night Bible Studies, we're going to give you $500 cash or cash app, whatever you want and $500 to your church or charity in your name. So we need your help to come up with a name for this series on Sunday nights here on the Seven Figure Squad. But uh, the cutoff is 75,000 subs, and we're nearing it right now. I think right now we're at, to what, 70, 70,100 subs? So we're getting pretty close, everybody. So how do we turn our dreams into reality? So let me ask you a question. The lights that I'm under right now, uh, the cell phone that you charge up, the, the, the Wi-Fi, the internet that you depend on, which a lot of people right now in Texas did not experience because of all the severe snowstorms. A lot of friends and family members uh, uh, did not have power or electricity or running water in Texas. Matter of fact, uh, our best friends here, uh, Rodolfo and Ceci Vargas, we just came back from a retreat in Louisville, Kentucky. Praise the Lord, we came back healthy and safe and no accidents. But we just came back from a national conference in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, again, where the snowstorm just obliterated a lot of states, but yet we were able to uh, get here back to Chicago safe and sound. Even though our flights were canceled multiple times, we decided to drive. But listen, how do we plug in to the things that help us turn our dreams into reality? Well, you got to plug into a power source. So you see how important the electricity is as a power source for your devices. I mean, unless it plugs into a power source, your cell phone doesn't work. These lights don't work. Your laptop, your iPad doesn't work. Your Wi-Fi doesn't work. So same thing too with your dreams and your goals that unless you plug into a power source, they never become true. So what does the Bible say about this? Well, check this out. Here's some examples. A 52-year-old milkshake machine salesman stumbled across a restaurant and they were selling hamburgers and fries and 30 seconds he got his order and he caught a vision. And what did he turn it into? From the Ronald McDonald's brothers, Ray Kroc turned that restaurant into McDonald's. What about a first grade dropout who uh, didn't have a lot of education, but he caught a vision and he's got the most amount of patents under his name and he invented the light bulb, which plugged into a power source would light up a whole entire room. A lot of inventions would happen after that, but that's Thomas Edison. What about this? Invention here from two Steves in a garage in Cupertino, California. They said, we're going to have this thing called a computer on every desk, on every house, in every business. And what did they create? They created an apple. They caught a vision when nobody was thinking about what a computer would do for them. What about this 30-year-old CEO, Iranian refugee, came from nowhere, served in the army, Started an agency with 66 agents and today has 20,000 agents across the country with a net worth of over $150 million and runs the largest YouTube channel in the world serving entrepreneurs called Valuetainment. Who is his name? Patrick Bet David. What do they plug into? They plugged into a power source. They plugged into a power source that not only allowed them to cast a vision, but also manifest that vision. How? Let's break that down with a power source is. Listen, let's go to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. And it reads like this, King James Version. When there is no vision, the people perish. 
When there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he or she. Back to the beginning of that scripture. When there is no vision, the people perish. Listen, I can't tell you how many times I run across people as we're coaching entrepreneurs. We're helping people with their personal finances. And we ask a simple question. What is it that you want? Here's our answers. Very generically spoken, saying, I want to be financially free. I want to stop worrying about money. I just want to make sure when I take out my credit card, I slide a credit card, the charges go through. I want to help my mom. I want to help my dad. I want to help the people I love and care about. I want to create a community center. We said, man, that's awesome. Now, I'm glad you have a little bit of a vision about what you want to do in your life. Then the second question I come up with them is this. How are you going to get there? Dead silence. Or furthermore, I ask them, well, how much money do you need to accomplish to be financially free? How much money do you need each month to take care of your parents? How much money do you need to raise to create that community center? Dead silence. So they caught an awesome dream, but unless there's specifics resulting from clarity, guess what? The vision perishes. And guess what? When there's no vision, the people that you were meant to serve, the people that you love and care about, the people that are strangers right now, but they're supposed to be your future business partners and friends and community partners, they never come around because you weren't clear, you didn't have specifics. How do you get to where you want to go in your life if you don't know what you want? And so when King Solomon says, when there is no vision, people perish. And when you're looking at your dream, your goals, when you're looking at the ideas that's set in your heart and nobody understands it, and that's why God put it in your heart, whatever it is as you're watching this right now, maybe you were meant to take care of parents, maybe you were meant to take care of, like for example, my sister, she helps fight human trafficking. Maybe you're meant to become a pastor. Maybe you're meant to become a community leader. Maybe you're meant to be a coach. Maybe you're meant to be an engineer. Maybe you're meant to be a lawyer. Maybe you're meant to become an entrepreneur. Maybe you're meant to make a million dollars, $5 million, $10 million, whatever that is, whatever that dream is that was set in your heart. Where do you think that came from? Where do you think that was inspired from? Listen, as corny as it may sound, I believe that God set it on your heart that you were supposed to create something great. Nobody else is supposed to understand it but you. That's why God gave it to you. Nobody was else supposed to understand it. You weren't supposed to confirm it with a human being. That's the relationship that you have between your and your creator. And that's why when God gave you a dream, gave you some thoughts about what you can accomplish in your life, now you got to get clear about it. Now you got to have some goals about it. That's one of the things I'm, I'm constantly asking my kids. I'm constantly asking people around me, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? Are you sure you want to be here? Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, because if you want this, how else were you going to get there? And folks, a lot of people don't like that because when you're clear on it and now there's specifics on it, well, guess what? Now you got steps. Now you got tasks. I often share with people, listen, if you want goals, they have to be specific, okay? They have to have a deadline and then there has to be a cost you are willing to pay. It might be, it might be a financial cost. Might be time cost. Might cause you to reprioritize a lot of things that get kept you busy away from your dreams and your goals and force you to prioritize the things that help manifest that dream. So what else will help fuel your dreams into reality? So number one is you gotta have vision. You got to be clear. You got to be specific. How many times have you heard somebody help you with a statement saying you need to create a dream board? If you don't want to create a dream board, can you at least save pictures of what you want your life to look like in a folder in your phone? You know, uh, uh, there, there's been many times I've snapshot, screenshot, save pictures of the car I wanted, the specific smell uh, I was envisioning of what that car would look like and smell, and the, the first phone call I'd make to my friends as soon as I bought the car, the type of uh, 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 conversation I have when people when I pull up to valet, and instead of taking my valet to the back, they leave my, va my car in the valet, they leave it in front of the restaurant or wherever I was at because they knew that type of car was special, that it was gonna attract a lot of people to the restaurant or the business if they leave my car in front giving the big convenience to me so I have to look for my car or I have to worry about the valet uh, uh, getting my car into the accident or ruining something in my car accidentally. There's been many visions about what the type of finances I'd need to create to provide my children options 
to six, I need to make sure that my wife, if need be, she would leave her job so therefore she can work with me full time in business if she chose to. The vision that I have to say to my parents, hey, you're retired. The feeling I would have when my dad, who never had a relationship with me in terms of a, a, a typical father-son relationship, hey, listen, support me all the, listen, my dad was present, but at the same time, he was absent, and I wanted to feel what it felt like for my dad to say, I love you, which I still haven't heard here in my adult life, but when I put him around situations, I give him around the things that I'm succeeding at, and I hear him say this, I hear him say, hey, Matt, good job, good job, and that means everything to me. I was envisioning that, and I was saying, you know, there's specific goals they don't want my parents, my, my dad, to come around to see me win in business so they can, they can see, hey, I'm proud of my son. They can see that, listen, all the effort coming here in front of the Philippines paid off. It was worth it. There's, I, by the way, I can go on and on about these things. What has God placed in your heart? What are some of the weird dreams that's weird to people, but seriously, honest to you. But now you need some fuel. And that fuel is now hope. Why do I talk about vision and hope? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. It reads like this. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. What does Solomon mean by that? Hope deferred. You know, I, I remember this uh, movie by George Clooney, and he's laying off people. It's called Up in the Air. He's laying off people. He's laying off people. His job is to go into companies and let people go. And uh, people are ticked off at him, pissed off at him. They're like, man, you know what? What are you doing trying to be all giddy, all nice and kind and professional in my face? You know what it's going to be like with me not having to have money next month to pay my mortgage? For me, I have to downsize and tell my kids they can't do this, they can't do that. Or I mean, I have to give up some of the decisions I have in my life in the next three, four, five years because you're laying me off my job today. And remember George Clooney asking the guy, hey, man, I see here based on your resume that you went to culinary school. And he asked the guy, I said, listen, real quick, how much did this job pay you to give up on your dreams? <laughs> he says 20000 or 30000 whatever the amount was, whatever his salary was. Because he settled for a job versus pursuing his dream and doing whatever necessary to fund and finance that dream because he was not clear and he was not specific of what his reasons were going to culinary school for was. Perhaps it was to be a chef, perhaps it was to start a restaurant, but he wasn't clear about the direction, he settled for the job that paid him right away. And he deferred his dream. Now he's a 56-year-old middle-aged dude. Now he's starting to relive his dream and look in his eyes. Cranked up that dream machine again. How many of you right now, uh, uh, there you're 20 years old, you're 30 years old, because what's going on in the pandemic, what's going on in this crisis, what's going on with, with uh, uh, layoffs and constrictions of job and potentially opportunities? What has done? What has that done to your dreams? Do you defer your dreams? Do you say, oh, "I'll never become financially independent"? Uh, I'm just going to wait for some government entity to take care of me, some corporate entity to take care of me, or do I go out there and be more resourceful and find the specifics? Because according to Scripture, it says hope deferred makes a heart sick. You're like longing and waiting, or sometimes even envious. When other people are living their dreams and you're not. But the flip side is true. It says here in scripture, a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. <laughs> I joke around with a lot of guys at our office because we, we tend to attract a lot of people that uh, may not have been exposed to financial education or financial opportunities. And I asked them, well, you know what the type of high is the best high? They're like, well, what are you talking about, Matt? You talking about getting high, Really? This guy's talking about getting high? <laughs> okay. I don't know if this guy got high. I said, bro, you know what the best type of high is? Dude, you, you get this thing right here. Oh, my gosh, this high is unbelievable. It's natural. It's organic. It lasts a long time. And here's the best part. There's no crash. <laughs> Dog, this is the best high. Matt, what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Winning. You know what I'm talking about? Reaching a goal. You know what I'm talking about? Accomplishing what you set out to do, coming through with your word. I can't tell you how awesome that feeling is. It's a tree of life. And guess what happens to a tree of life? It brings, do, it brings new roots to different grounds. It expands and gives birth to other dreams and goals that you never thought was possible. 
listen, I, I'm nobody. I'm, 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 by the way, I'm not a pastor. I'm just an entrepreneur trying to figure this thing out. I'm just an a, a, a entrepreneur that's reading scripture and applying biblical principles and values and morality to my decisions and business according to scripture. Not to say that I'm perfect by any means. I'm just as faulty, just like many of you watching this video right now. So please don't judge me. But I'm looking to figure this thing out. And the number one enemy to hope being deferred is procrastination. Deferring it. Say somebody else will do it. I need to do this right now without ever working out the things that matter to you. Another part of this is not coming through. You make a lot of these promises. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And next thing you know, you don't come through. And so I'm, I tell people, I'm, I share with people, be careful what you say. Be careful what you promise. Be careful what you say you're going to do. Why? Because if you don't come through, guess what starts to happen? Hope gets deferred. Makes the heart sick. And then you start feeling less and less better about yourself. Your self-confidence and self-importance starts to erode. The third part about this is this. If you really want to stop deferring it, and you really want to, to pause and say, you know what? I, I want to make sure I come through. Well, guess what? Find ways not to only help yourself, but according to Scripture, it says, hey, find ways to help other people. When you help people get what they want, guess what happens to you? You get what you want. That's the most exciting thing about what we're realizing about this pandemic. Even though we're all in some form or fashion, isolated or some form or fashion, locked down, guess what happens when people get back together? Joy, excitement. Listen, we just had our event happen in Louisville, Kentucky, as I was mentioned earlier. It's been our first live event in over a year since the pandemic, since the lockdown, since the shutdown. Louisville, Kentucky opened their doors to us. They said, come on down, have your own event over here, live event at that. When, by the way, nobody can come unless they got a COVID-19 negative test. Uh, we had everybody with masks on and social distancing within, within, um, within inside the event. And when I'm thinking about all the guest speakers, that in spite of the snowstorms and the ice and the sleet and every reason, excuse for, not, for them not to come through, all of our guest speakers came through. We even got to meet uh, uh, Jeb Blunt, who uh, wrote the book Sales EQ and Fanatical Prospect. We even got to meet Douglas Andrew, my longtime, longtime financial insurance mentor for 16 years. We got to meet Tim Tebow, who obviously stands up for truth, values, and principles. And he injected that into our audience as we interviewed him on stage. Our own CEO, founder, Patrick McDavid, this mentioned, that I mentioned early in this video, who manifested a vision. Here's the thing about being a visionary, though. A visionary is a present liar. Like, people don't believe in your vision. But when the vision comes true, oh my gosh, I always knew you were going to do that. <laughs> yeah, right. But all these things was in a process of def not, all these things stopped deferring hope. We manifested and planned and in spite of the setbacks of canceled flights, guess what? We came through. And guess what that made to our heart and our spirit is a moral victory. It soothed our soul. And we're so excited about the things that we learned and the community that we were able to grab together because for the most part, all of us were on Zoom for over a year. First event. And guess what happened? We we're in all together. It was magic. I was so proud of everybody. And last but not least, here's how... Scripture, here's how King Solomon defines result. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 19. It reads like this in a new living translation. It is pleasant to see dreams come true, but fool refuse to turn from evil to attain them. Wow. That's King Solomon. The wisest and richest king who ever lived. You talk about being a fool or being happy in your life, being fulfilled, becoming a tree of life, of hope, of vision manifesting it to become true. And so as I wrap up, a couple action steps for you to consider taking. Number one, figure out what you need to apply after watching this video. Are you clear about your vision? Are you clear about what you want? That's your first and most important move because without vision, people perish. Without vision, your wife gives you a hard time. Without vision, your kids give you a hard time. Without vision, people in your life give you a hard time because you, my friend, are not clear. Whether you're male or female, if you're not clear about what you want. And, and sometimes you get married to somebody because you're not clear about what your marriage or your business, because you become partners with people. You're not clear about that vision is supposed to look like. Number two, consider what you need to change. 
What do you need to root out? When, what do you need to weed out? What do you need to change like immediately? And third thing, what do you need to teach? First, teach yourself. And as you learn, as you master the topic, what can you then teach and help others with? Because I'm excited about you turning your dreams into reality. The big reason why people follow this YouTube channel is because they want to think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, and so therefore they've become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And this premise, this premise here on Sundays is how to do it from a biblically sound standpoint so therefore your money lasts for generations, not just for the short term because you have a short term vision, but more so you have a long term vision, just not making money for today, but how do I make money today and next year and next five years and next 20 years and next generations? How do you get that done? That's how we get down here on the Seven Fair Squad. That being said, guys, before I let you go, please check out these two videos here. Number one, how to avoid losing a lot of money according to scripture. And number two here, the four qualities that make you irreplaceable. People want you in their life because you're casting vision and hope and injecting that into life. Well, my prayer for you is that you become a tree of life, of hope, of vision, that you can not only help yourself, but also help other people too as well. That being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, your feedback, your questions. As many of you may know, we answer your questions, we respond to them, we snapshot them, we set them to the side, and we set up a special episode where we get back to your questions. And also, don't forget, what do we name these Sunday night biblical Bible studies? Please help us with a name for these series. And in return, we're going to help you with a $500 check or a cash app, whatever you want, and $500 to your church or charity in your name by helping us create a name for these Sunday night biblical Bible studies. Once we cross 75,000 subs, we'll announce the winner to that contest. With that being said, guys, appreciate your time. Appreciate your watching of this video because I want your dreams to turn into reality. With that being said, guys, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart. And be money smart today.